Welcome everybody to Pop Dust Presents. I'm here today with Paul Castro Jr., a filmmaker, an actor, voice actor. Um, you've got a couple projects that you're involved with coming out. Yes. The first of which that I'll mention is Madonna and the Breakfast Club. Yes, it's a documentary feature about Madonna's early career in New York City. So we're talking late 70s, early 80s before she was you know, uh, like a virgin or any of the things that people like most notably know her for. So it's a, it's like a narrative documentary. So we do reenactments. So it's not just talking head interviews. So it's sort of like a drunk history thing. Kind of. Yeah. That's awesome. Without, without the drunk, uh, John C. Riley doing the, the narration of it. Yes. But, uh, it's, uh, we premiere, uh, theaters worldwide and like all over the world. We're, uh, March 12th. Uh, and we have a premiere March 6th. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, where is the premiere happening if people are in the area to catch? Uh, so we're trying to... T we, we have a, a sold-out uh, premiere screening at Nighthawk Cinema in Prospect Park on March 6th. But so you got to bribe somebody to get in. Yeah. It's like we sold out in the first like hour that we put tickets online for because there's such... Uh, if you don't follow us, go to Madonna in the Breakfast Club on Instagram. You can see our uh, actress who plays Madonna, Jamie Ald. She is a... like. It's a clone. Sometimes when we do like uh, comparison photos of her yeah. from like the late uh, 70s, early 80s, people are like, who is who? How did the whole thing come about? Uh, well, the way it came about for him is a lot different than how I got involved with it. Okay. Uh, so for him, he's been a huge Madonna fan his entire life. He did a short film called Physical Attraction, which was one of Madonna's hit songs um, with my cousin, actually, Raquel Castro. And that did very successful in the film festival circuit. He knew he wanted to do a feature. He thought he wanted it to be a biopic. But biopics are a lot more expensive yeah. to make, a lot harder to make. And so he wound up doing this hybrid documentary narrative film for this. Um, and I got involved with the project because they were looking for a producer uh, who just was more kind of like the opposite end of the spectrum, wasn't a fan of Madonna in any sense. Not that... I'm not now, but yeah. I, I'm not a, a you know obsessively crazed fan. Like, not to say he's obsessively crazed, but he he knows the ins and outs of her entire life. Uh, You're gonna be more focused on the filmmaking sure, aspect. Yeah, yeah just really just making a good film, and I think that both of our uh, our work ethics came together in a really kind of beautiful way. And the film is it's. If you don't know, if you love Madonna, you're gonna love it no matter what. But even if you don't, the film centers around the band. Breakfast Club, have you ever heard of them? They yeah. were like dominated for Best New Artist back in the eight, late 80s. Um, and it's really about their experience with her and being in bands with her and how that kind of like, that started her career. Before that's super she interesting. I feel like that's not something that people talk about. You know what I mean? And she's iconic at this point and you know, you don't hear a whole lot about like her life before. Yeah. That. And it's really rich. If you, when she got inducted into the hall of fame, the first kind of people she mentions is Dan and Ed Gilroy. And they were the two founders of breakfast club, the band. And it's just kind of, you see her kind of, and they say this in the film, they, she throws the spotlight every now and then, but there's been nothing really done about them specifically. They've been in other documentaries before, but yeah. not in this fashion. So you mentioned next big thing. Um, I've, I got to see, uh, the the pilot uh, yeah. sort of like during um, some of the, the the making of it in the earlier stages so that's something that I'm familiar with uh, how would you describe it to people that have never heard of it so right now well the show is basically uh, a comedy centered around a group of video game fanatics who hang out in a game store called the Game Factory think uh, the league with Mark Duplass and Nick Kroll and all those guys meets uh, it's Always Sunny in Philadelphia or New Girl just with video games. Uh, for us, we wanted something that was true to like video game culture, not just kind of diluted geek culture. Yeah. You see shows that are like Big Bang Theory, take that for what it is if you're a Big Bang Theory fan, but we just knew it was kind of just like you throw a superhero joke in there and all of a sudden they're a geek show. Yeah. Uh, for us, we wanted to really get knee deep into like anime, video game, card game, board game, consoling. PC gaming culture and be, yeah. stay true to that. That's awesome. And I guess for other like people that aspire to be indie filmmakers, whether it's you know a, a show like that um, or a movie, I guess one thing for them to keep in mind is like the amount of time that you're like hanging on to it before it. <laughs> before yeah. It sees the light of day. It's serious. I mean, that's the thing that people underestimate. They think 
oh, I write a script and I make it and all of a sudden there it is. I mean, doing all that stuff is kind of just like, it's like 10% of the yeah. job. Uh, we're doing, we're working on a feature right now too that we started writing. I started writing probably five years ago. It was like the first blueprint for the script. And then three years ago was when we really started writing it. Wow. And then like it's been done for about a year and we've been doing financing for like the last year now. So outside of just making films and stuff you have done, I believe you played a role in a movie that's premiering at South by Southwest, uh, The Garden Left Behind? Yep, I have a, a small role in that. That's gonna, I think uh, it's a really, really beautiful film. Flavio Alves, the director, It's it really is a trans film in the sense that, that we. it's not just a story about, because the film is about a trans uh, uh, Mexican immigrant who's in New York uh, going through a transition. And our actress, Carly Guevara, she does an amazing job, but it's all the other actors supporting that. We have about 20 LGBTQ and trans actors specifically in the film um, and behind the camera too. Kristen Parker is one of the producers. Uh, so it really gives a voice to the trans community in a great way. My character, on the other hand, is absolutely kind of like what you see right now in uh, uh, America and the darkest sides of it, people who for no reason have this desire to hate against kind of like trans people. Um, so you're, you're a bad guy. Yeah, I play okay. I play a really bad kid and it's, it's, a, it's a weird kind of way to give it to be in because as an actor, you're like, oh, this is such a great character to be such a like it's so not you in a way yeah. uh and it gives you a chance to kind of expand but on the surface you're like that character why would you, anyone want to step in that person's shoes but they yeah. exist the title uh is the garden left behind so t g b or l b l b yeah and i'm guessing that is purposefully like a like, anagram of lgbt i I actually, I don't know, but that is, I, I gotta ask. I kind of feel that. like, right? Yeah, that's, I, I don't think that that was ever mentioned to, to me in that sense, but if it's Maybe not, it's an eggs. insane, happy accident. Yeah, yeah, if it wasn't on purpose. That's, yeah, that's I gotta ask cool. him that, that's crazy. But so, okay, so The Garden Left Behind is premiering at South by Southwest, yep. so that's like March... 7th, they, they have a couple of screenings, I think it's March... Um, uh, March 9th, I think they played the Saturday and um, Sunday, I believe. So that's awesome. Yeah. And then, and then you have your project, Madonna and the Breakfast Club, uh, coming out like March mm -hmm. uh, six. You said six, yeah. So that week is and crazy. Then, and then it's gonna be uh, you're gonna be able to see it in other places like the 12th. So yeah, March is a pretty March is a pretty big month for you. Yeah, it's uh, they say when it rains it pours. So maybe uh, next big thing we'll also have a. Dude, Something will that, happen in March. Your lips to the universe's ears, man. That's like uh, that's our baby. Just massive. It's a massive audience. Yeah. And I think you guys like speak to them very well. It's like esports is yeah. blowing up for a very specific reason, and it's only gonna get bigger. It's the the most um, rapid growing sport of all time. Well, anything else that you uh, want to tell people about? I don't know, man. I'm doing. I mean, I'm acting in a bunch of other things. I have a couple other movies coming out. Uh, I just did a movie with Seth uh, Rogen, which was pretty fun. That's crazy. They don't even have a name for it yet. It's called like Untitled Pickle Movie. That's way cool, man. Yeah, I got some things, you know, of, brewing. Things. That's yeah. really sweet. Well, uh, thank you for making time to come by Pop Dust and talk always, to us. Always, man. man. As always, dude. Thank Very you. Good luck with the premieres, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Madonna and the Breakfast Club dot com and Instagram Madonna and the Breakfast Club. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, uh, a very, very inspirational story. And if you don't know Madonna, you're going to fall in love with her. All right. Paul Castro Jr. Thank yes, you, man. Yes, thank you.